In this hands-on video, we're gonna talk about Apple's just released Clips app, the video editing app that allows you to build video compositions out of short clips. It's a pretty impressive application and it's deeper than it appears on the surface. Actually, it can be a little bit complicated if you don't know exactly how to go about doing things. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through most of the features found in the Clips app. So basically there are two essential structures in the Clips app. There are videos, which are the high level items, uh, basically individual videos that you create, movies, finished productions. So there's a video right there. You can create a new video if you wish to do so. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new video. And then when you create a new video, you can start adding clips to build that video. If you want to switch between videos, you can go back up, tap the Chevron button in the upper left hand corner, and then switch to the video that you want to go to. Now, when you create a new video, that video isn't actually created until you add at least one clip to it. So keep that in mind. Although you can add several type of assets to your production, the Clips app defaults to video. So to add a video, just tap and hold the record button like this. So now you're in the process of recording a video clip that will, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, automatically be added to the overall video composition. And as you can see, if you tap the play button, it will play through each clip sequentially. And you can also rearrange those clips or trim the clips to your liking. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The nice thing about clips is that you can reframe your shot and continue to add clips and build on your composition, just like I'm doing right here. So now I have three clips in this video thus far, and I can continue to add additional clips to flesh out the production. Now, by default, you have to press and hold the record button to invoke recording. Convenient, but not always practical. Say you're using a tripod and you want it to be in the frame. In that case, you wouldn't be able to hold the record button, but what you could do is tap and hold and slide over to the left to lock the shutter. So the Clips app will continue to record even while you're not holding the record button. And when you're done, just tap the record button to stop. To add a photo to your production, tap the photo button beneath the viewfinder. Now this is probably one of the more difficult concepts to understand about the Clips app, at least initially. When you take a photo, you're not placing that photo into your list of clips at that time. In order to use the photo, you actually have to record the photo. So basically you're taking a photo and then recording that photo. So to record it, you just tap and hold the record button like this. The reason that this is such a good idea is because it allows you not only to voice over your photo, but you can manipulate the length of time that the photo is on screen. And you can also use zooming and panning while you're recording and voicing over the photo. So you can have your own sort of Ken Burns effect right there on the fly. It's actually pretty smart. It takes a little while to get used to it, but once you do, it makes sense. Now it's understandable that you may not get the shot right on the very first try. So there's a handy retake button right at the bottom of the viewfinder to quickly retake your photo. You can also add photos and videos directly from your photo library. So right beneath the viewfinder, tap the library button and there you can browse through your photo library. So once you find a photo or video that you wanna use, just tap on it to select it and it's ready to be recorded. Remember, it doesn't place it directly into your clips. You actually have to record the photo in order for it to appear there. So let's go ahead and try that right now. I'm gonna record this photo. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna do a little voiceover. So let's try this out. All right, so let's play it back. And you can see as I zoom in and zoom out. Now, as you might imagine, this isn't just limited to photos. You can actually do that with videos as well. In fact, you can choose the endpoint where you wish to start the recording. So I think I want to start about right here and let's start the recording just like that. So let's go ahead and play back now and see what it looks like. Again, being able to use your photo library items, your photos and videos adds even more depth to your compositions. Looks good. Let's move on. There's another type of clip that you can add to your production, a title card clip. So when you tap the T button at the top of the app, you can browse through 12 different types of clips here. Each title card features its own unique animation and you can go in and edit the text inside the card, just like that. Once you're satisfied with the look of the card, you can press record, the animation will kick off, you'll see your text on screen, 
and the card will be automatically inserted into your production for the length of time that you record. So let's play it back and see how it looks. Looks good. So we have already touched on panning and zooming and photos and videos, but I wanted to touch on it just a little bit more because it's a very important part of using the Clips app. Uh, you can of course pan and zoom prior to shooting like this. So I'm actually just double tapping to zoom in, double tapping to zoom out, or you can use the two finger pinch gesture to zoom in or out more precisely. And as I mentioned, you can do all this to frame your shot prior to recording your clip. But the nice thing is, is that this doesn't only work for photos. You can do this with videos and you can actually do so prior to you recording your video or during the recording. So that gives you a lot of flexibility on the fly. So once I get my shot framed, I'm going to go ahead and hold to record, lock the recording. And now I can really get in here and zoom in, zoom out. And at first I use the pinch to zoom gesture, but you can also double tap to zoom in tight really quickly. And you can zoom out just as easily. So let's stop our recording and let's select the clip we just shot and press the play button to preview. So those zooms that we put in there should be recorded as you can see right there. There's a zoom in, then I have that double tap to jump zoom and I can zoom out. So you can see how this all translates directly to my recording. Now all these features are cool, but the headlining feature, the flagship feature, so to speak, is this right here, live titles. So the Clips app is smart enough to dictate the text that you speak during your recordings. And I find that if you speak slowly and clearly, it does a really good job of getting it right. Let's check it out. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? So we release the record button and you can see the dictated text appear right there on the live title. That is awesome. And the cool thing is that you can change the live title style after the fact. So even if you've already recorded, you can go in, tap the live titles button, and then choose an alternate style. And that will still maintain your dictated text, just like that. Now, if you wanna turn off your live titles, just tap the live titles button and choose the option in the bottom right-hand corner. And poof, gone. But it gets better. Are you excited about the upcoming Mac Pro? Even if you didn't have live titles enabled at the time of your recording, you can go back in, select the live title, tap the live titles button first, of course, and you can see that dictated text automatically shows up. That's pretty cool. So even though I didn't have this enabled at first, I can always go back in and add it to my clip. All right, so now let's play it back and see what it looks like. Are you excited about the upcoming Mac Pro? Very nice. But I do have one little nitpick. I don't like the fact that pro is not capitalized. So to fix this, you need to pause the video while playing it back and then tap on the title and you can go in and edit that title right there. So now let's play it back. Capital P, that's better. Like most video centric apps these days, Clips has several different filters to choose from. So if you tap the filters button, you can see a live view of those filters in action and you can choose a filter just by tapping on it. So um, I think I'm gonna choose the comic book filter. That seems to be the most popular one. So there's our little frog there. So now that he's in the frame, I'm going to go ahead and record this clip. And you can see that the filter is applied in the viewfinder and it will be applied to the clip, of course. So let's go ahead and play back that clip. Hmm, I can already tell I don't really like that filter. But the nice thing about clips is that it's flexible. So you can actually go in after the fact, tap the filters button and change the filter on the fly. So let's choose, hmm, I like the one in the upper left hand corner. Let's choose that one. And now let's play back, much better. If you tap the daring fireball look, I mean the special effects button at the top of the screen there, you can choose different types of stickers. And as you can see, there are some geo stickers there as well. So it will, populate that sticker based on your location. Also, you have date and time. Um, so what you can do is just tap on the sticker that you wanna add, it adds it right to the frame, and you can position that sticker anywhere within the viewfinder. So let's actually grab our little duck here. And you can see, I'm gonna hold to record, and now I have that nice pseudo track text feature. So let's play it back and see how it looks. I like that. Now, of course, these stickers can be removed. Just tap on it and tap the X in the upper left-hand corner 
you can have multiple stickers on screen at once. You can position, rotate, resize the sticker. Um, you can edit the text for a sticker if you wish to do that. So here's the rotation, as you can see there, and the scaling. So a nice trick to employ to get your frame just how you like it. Now when you tap this special effects button to pull up the stickers, if you swipe over to the next page, you'll find your recently used emoji. And this, of course, allows you to insert your favorite emoji right into the frame. And just like stickers, you can reposition, you can rotate, you can scale like that and get it just how you like it. But what if you want a particular emoji that doesn't show up in the list? Well, simply tap on the emoji to edit it. You can actually replace it with text if you want to do that. But who wants to do that, right? Let's go ahead and tap our emoji button and let's replace this with some emoji. And as you can see, you can, you can pick from the entire catalog of emoji characters. And as we showed you before, you can scale, rotate, and reposition the character. All right, so let's talk about some more basics. I want to play back this clip. So after some mulling it over, I decided I don't want that sound in my clip. So just select the clip, tap the mute button, and it's muted. It's that simple. So when I play back, you don't hear a thing until you get to the next clip. Something else you must know is how to trim a clip in your video project. So select the clip you want to trim, tap the trim button, and from there you can play back, position the playhead, and use the handles to trim the clip. So once you're satisfied, you just tap apply. So let's play it back and make sure it's right. Not quite, let's finesse it a little bit. That seems better. I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and apply the changes. So now the updated trimmed clip appears in my list of clips. If you decide that you don't need a clip, maybe it takes away from your production, you can select that clip and then tap the delete button to get rid of it. Then just choose delete clip but there's a faster way to get rid of clips. Simply tap, hold, and drag up, and release. So when I wanna remove a clip, tap, hold, drag up, release, tap, hold, drag up, release. Now you've seen me rearrange clips before in this video, but I just wanted to reiterate how important it is for continuity purposes. Uh, it could just change up the whole vibe of your video by having clips in a specific order. And all it takes is a simple tap and drag to move a clip to a specific location in your list of clips. Very, very important function that you want to get down. Apple includes several soundtracks in the Clips app that allows you to add background music to your video. After exiting editing mode, tap the little note icon in the upper right hand corner, and then you can choose soundtracks. Now there's a whole list of different soundtracks to match the mood of your video. So you can go through, download the one you want, and then add that to your video. So I'm going to download this one right here. And you can see it's downloading. Now I just tap it to add it to my video, tap the back button, and there it is. So I can play it back, and there it is. A soundtrack for my video. Unfortunately, you can't add Apple Music tracks to your videos, but the music that you do own that's on your phone, you can add just like that, just by tapping my music and browsing your library. Now the nice thing about this is that you can actually scrub on the timeline to position the endpoint to the exact location that you want. So I can just drag like that. And if I wanna come in right there, that is where the music will come in when the video starts. What if there's a particular clip in your video that you just really, really, really love? Well, you can select that clip and then tap the download button in the upper right hand corner and that will actually save it directly to your photo library in full resolution. So there is that clip right there in your photo library, standing on its own two feet, separate from your actual production. The one thing you have to keep in mind when doing this is that if you delete that video, since it's now linked to this video in the photo library, you're gonna get this, missing clips. So make sure you do not delete a video that you save to your photo library if you're in the midst of editing your video and you need it for your final project. So say you've worked hard on your video, you got all your clips organized and arranged and trimmed perfectly, you got your background music there, everything looks right, you're ready to export, right? So all you do is tap the chevron button in the upper left hand corner, there you can select your video, play it back, you can open it if you want to to go back and edit it, or you can tap the share button in the bottom right hand corner and share to various apps like Instagram or YouTube, or you can save the video directly to your photo library. And the nice thing about doing that is that you can share with any app when you save it there. Now, what if you wanna delete an entire video production? Well, tap the chevron in the upper left-hand corner 
and long press on the video, and then tap the X button to get rid of it. So ladies and gentlemen, that is our hands-on look at the Clips app. It is a surprisingly deep app with a lot of features and you can make some really, really good productions with this application and it's very well done. It's not easy to make an app like this that can produce the results that this thing is capable of while maintaining simplicity. This app is a little deep, it has a learning curve, so it's not super straightforward, but I definitely think it's worth learning. If you appreciated this video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.